Hey guys, welcome to Game Romp Easy Mode, a chill, easy-going podcast with your host, me, David, and... Me, Deanna. Whoa. Yeah, Deanna. Anyway, oh. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, it's just, it's just always so weird to make an intro. So anyway, I hope you guys can understand if I'm awkward, but hey, whatever. We're just here to chat. Just relax. Be, yeah, and be chill and not think about things too deeply. Yeah, try. we don't need to be super professional. Yeah, we're just having a combo, and you guys are here along with for with the ride. Along? Along for the ride. That's it. Oh, man. <laughs> Stumbling over my words. Anyway, so too much stuff has happened, huh? It's only been a week, and yet, like... We still got more game shows to go over real quick. Yeah, I want to keep it kind of brief, because I don't want to rehash everything. <laughs> That's fair, but we do have thoughts on what we saw. On some things, yeah. So I guess we'll we'll go briefly over the uh, Microsoft show, and then we'll talk about the Nintendo show. And we're not going to do the Ubisoft or any of the other ones, because like, there's just too many, and we haven't watched them all. So, Maybe one day. Yeah, I guess briefly we can just shoot off what happened at the Microsoft that we found interesting. We're not even going to go over every game. Like, I think the first interesting thing for me was the Indiana Jones game, mm. because like... It looks really good if you're like, I guess, into that game, which it feels like it's this, it was the original inspiration for things like Lara Croft and yeah. what was the other one? Uncharted? Yeah. So if you're into those games anyways, this seems like a good step into to me, going it, into it, it. The most Im- impressive thing was just like, it felt like the movies, like mm. the good movies. The good movies. <laughs> the voice actor did an amazing job imitating Harrison Ford. And yeah, like, that was like so fucking spot on. And like they they captured the the adventure and humor of the Indiana Jones original trilogy so mm. well. Like it doesn't take itself too seriously. Exactly. Oh, I love those movies. Those are, those three movies are like probably one of the t- my favorite movies of all time. Although, quick question for you: Do you think it's I don't know if cheesy would be the right word, but do you think it's silly that they put in the rolling ball, you know? No, I mean, it's kind of iconic. I don't know how they're going to play it off. Maybe they just wanted to have, like, you get to play through this section, so you get to deal with all these cool traps that you saw Harrison Ford run through. I mean, on one hand, it's like, oh, no, it's just it's the boulder again. But on the other hand, we've ourselves never got to, like, experience it or play it, so... I'm okay with it because it could be just a fun little romp through an obstacle course. We'll see. That's fair. It's it's either way. It's probably going to be a short section. It's not like you're going to spend ten hours running from a boulder. I would assume. Yeah. So fair enough. we'll see. I think it looks really interesting. I, I the game could be whatever. The thing that really sold me on that trailer was just like it felt like watching the movie, and mm-hmm. that to me was like wow, you nailed the feel. And that I think for an Indiana Jones game, that's like the most important thing. Now, the other thing was, now the trailer looks good, the graphics look amazing, the voice acting, everything. Did the trailer, in, was that just cutscenes, or did it include gameplay, and I just forgot? It has been a while since we've seen it. I think there was a little bit of gameplay, but I could be wrong. But it's funny, because, like, again, to reiterate, like, for me, the most fun thing about that trailer was that it felt like a new, good old Indiana Jones movie. Mm. And, like, I'm sure the gameplay will be fine. I think there was some gameplay with, like, first-person whipping and stuff. Oh, okay. But, like, I just I just want, like, a good indie adventure. Yeah. No offense to old indie. Like, I don't know. I, I There's just something about the classic old-timey indie. Anyway, moving on. Let's not dwell on that too much. We'll just go briefly over these. Like, okay, Diablo has a new update, I guess. And, like, I haven't really played Diablo 4. I really no, that like... was definitely just a cutscene. Right? Yeah, and it was... Incredible. I mean, it's gorgeous. Like, they are so good at making cutscenes, mm-hmm. which is like maybe they should just make more movies. I don't know. I I want to play Diablo at some point. I haven't gotten around to it. I did play a lot of Diablo three on the console, which made me realize that like those uh that style of RPG is just way better with a controller, in my opinion, instead of clicking. I mean, hey, if that's how you want to play the game, that's fine. As long as they give the option. Obviously. Yeah, and nowadays, yeah, they're they're doing the option. So maybe I'll play it. It's just. It was amazing how that trailer was like, it's, I guess it was gory, but like just, I don't know, there's, there's a vibe about it that's horrific and you just can't stop watching. Mm. So, I don't know. Then again, I don't really want to make a Blizzard account, so I'll have to see if uh, you can just play that on Game Pass, maybe? I mean, Microsoft owns them now, which is a weird thing to say. Yeah, that's true. 
Same for like World of Warcraft. I mean, Microsoft owns that. Can you even play World of Warcraft on Game Pass? That would be interesting. I don't think you can. Probably not because it has that monthly subscription aspect. Yeah. Speaking of which, they also revealed the trailer for like, I guess it's the Naga expansion with Ashara, if I'm remembering the names right. Mm, is that the one with something about a well? It, it's been so long since yeah, I've yeah. into I think Warcraft she, lore. I think she like lives under water and people have been wanting to explore her area of the world since even back when we played it like back in wrath of the lich king days mm. so this is a long time coming it'll be interesting to well i don't think i'd play this new thing i i i, I think i'm just done with wow but it's still kind of fun to think back on nostalgically i guess yeah that's fair and it's also like I don't know. It's been so long since I've played, but it would if it has to take place underwater, then it, they would have to improve how fighting works underwater. Unless somehow you go underwater, but then, oh, you're in like a temple or whatever the Naga architecture was, which was like mostly ruins, I think, right? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I, I'm assuming if, if they go to an expansion where the Naga are the, like the main thing and that's where they currently live, they probably wouldn't be living in ruins. So I don't know. Well, no, I mean that. It's just like, are they going to be fighting underwater? In which case, they're going to have to revamp the underwater combat. Are they? I mean, I don't know. I I don't remember enough about... It wasn't as good as, like, I think, remember in Guild Wars, you would go underwater and you'd have special underwater weapons and stuff. Yeah, I actually didn't really like that too much, to be honest with you. I always found underwater battles in Guild Wars 2 to be kind of, like, I didn't want to be there. (laughs) But um, as for WoW, it's like, WoW's combat is so dated i guess like vaguely simplistic it's just i don't know it, i'm sure raiders would be very angry with us right now yeah i mean i, I really <laughs> don't care i i don't care what they do with the the wow gameplay because i'm probably not gonna play it the other interesting it's aspect think about. is if there's the big bad meanie that's the naga i wonder what are they gonna do with the storylines with like the alliance people versus the horde people because that that's was another, a huge thing for them. That's another reason I just don't care anymore about that. Like, it, it, this story of Warcraft was kind of interesting back in the day when it was like, you know, it, it wasn't this forever game. It wasn't a game that just can never end. So the war has to keep going. Mm. There was a sense of, like, hope and maybe things can change. Maybe things will end. And I but think now that's that it's where they a, messed up a lot of the lore. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. And that's why I don't really care too much about the lore or WoW in general. It was just fun to see it for nostalgia. But I'm not going to think too deeply on it and like I'm not going to play it. So, I don't know. Let's move on. Fair. Another fun thing that showed up was the flight simulator. Oh, man. I This was the first thing that I was really excited to know more about because I did download originally when the Microsoft Simulator, what was it, 2020, 2021, something like that? I don't remember when it came out. The last major update, I think it was it was when um, Game Pass first came out to PC, if I'm not mistaken, and it was like $1 a month back then. I think they still have that $1 introduction for new accounts. Anyways... I did enjoy that for a little bit because, yes, you fly the world and it's actually it was, the yeah, world. It was, it was amazing. You know, if it take if the flight takes three hours in real life to get down to Florida, it's going to take three hours, quote unquote, in game because it's the size of the world. And I think everyone did the thing where you like, I'm going to fly around the city I live in and look at my house and stuff. Yes, everyone was, did that. It was great. It was really interesting. I remember when specifically one YouTuber we used to watch Sips. He did that, and he was just having a blast with his stream and stuff. Hmm. But I am more excited about this one because now there's actually things Jobs. to do. Yeah, there's, like a career. Yeah, a career mode, maybe quests, if that's what you want to call them. And I don't remember all of the types that they have. I guess there's probably, like, maybe a photography one. Like, if you go in, I don't know if there was one about, like, taking photography of animals or not. Hmm, it's ringing a bell, yeah. Like I, I guess you so. take like a helicopter somewhere, land, and do you get out? Well, I was thinking like overhead things, like you know they always oh. show like the savanna and stuff, and the great migrations of the zebra and water buffalo and stuff like that. Yeah. Then there was what medical transport, perhaps. Like this is the I'm excited for this especially because this is going to be the closest we have to a spiritual successor of Simcopter. Yeah. Now we're not going to have things With like less goofiness. Yeah, we're not going to have, like, clearing traffic or clearing riots, I'm assuming. I don't know. But just jobs in general. 
it, it, yeah, that's the thing about Flight Sim. Like, it was interesting and beautiful, but, like, there, it was just free form. Like, and that's now a this, tough. this gives you something to do and something to work for and, like, a reason to play. Because mm. we played Flight Sim for, like, what, not even a week? Just a few days. And it's like, well, that was fun. Now what? I guess I'm done. Yeah, because unless you make up your own story or something like that. I think some of the streamers had those voice changing things, which I could never figure out how to Like you're on do. the radio. Yeah, it would make you sound like an actual pilot on the radio. And mm. it would get that, like, interference type of sound. Yeah. And that was cool. If you want to role play that, that's great. My other idea at the time, which, again, I couldn't manage to figure out, but almost play it in the sense of, like, mixing flight simulator and American or European truck simulator. Yeah. Which I think would be cool. Like, oh, I'm delivering the truck here, but it's not my own truck, so I have to fly back. So you mm -hmm. fly back. The thing I worry about, though, is, like, the thing about American Truck Simulator, it's all very condensed. So, like... Yeah, I mean, it doesn't match up one-to-one. -one. It, it'd be one thing in American Truck Simulator. It'd be probably faster to be like, oh, I'm driving from Dallas to Albuquerque. And that in-game is going to take, like, 20 to 30 minutes. Whereas, like, if you... Oh, in Flight Sim, I'm going to fly from Dallas to Albuquerque. It's going to take you hours. Yeah, I know. So, it it I wasn't know. perfect, but it was just the idea of mixing the two games. And it would have created almost your own storyline for at least Flight Simulator of yeah. why you're going this. Well, it'll be interesting to see what they do with it. So once there's more info about that, we will revisit the topic. But for now, let's move on. <laughs> Uh, another thing that was revealed was the new Dragon Age, which I'm, I know you probably don't care too much about. Have yeah, you played? This is, I don't... I, look, I got confused between dra the difference between Dragon Age and Drag... Or was it Dragon's... Dragon's Dogma. Well, Dogma. In that case, let's not d dwell too much into it. Apparently, the, the trailer during the press show was weird. It made it look like it was like a MOBA or like some sort of free-to-play battle arena. They really got into the story, didn't they? Or a story. Well, no, that's the problem. The, the trailer looked like it was just going to be some multiplayer thing. But oh. then later on, they showed gameplay of like, no, don't worry. It's actually going to be, this is actually the new proper Dragon Age. It was a real weird mess. Um, basically, 101 on how to not to make a trailer. Because it just confused everyone and left a bad taste in people's mouths. And then later they showed gameplay. It's like, no, no, don't worry. This is the next game. This is the next proper RPG. The story continues. Here's the characters. Hmm. It was really weird i don't know why they did it that way on the other hand all this negative press maybe no press is bad press i don't know there's no such thing as bad press or something like that yeah but well we'll see i'm not sure if i'll play it i i, I really did love dragon age inquisition but i actually never finished it i know the ending so i know like the guy that betrays you or whatever anyway I won't was that the one we played that's what I asked you. Did you play Dragon Age? I, I think you've played one of them, but like not too but much. But was that the co-op one that we played? Co-op? There was like a top-down? Or is then that well, again? That's that not was... even Dragon Age. No, you're thinking of Divinity. Oh my god. From the okay. people who made uh, this Boulder's is how, Gate. This is how bad I am. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> we never, you know, we played Divinity together. We never played Boulder's Gate together. But That's up to you. Or I, did we? I don't we might have tried. Oh boy, that's a whole other discussion. Anyway, <laughs> maybe moving on. Fable. Fable looks interesting. It's I've, I've only played the first Fable. I never got to play two or three, but I do want to try this new one because, hey, it's a big open world RPG and it's got a goofy tone, which I love. I love games that don't take themselves too seriously, like Fallout or, mm. you know, stuff like that. So yeah, I'm into it. We didn't really see too much. It was mostly just like CG trailers and stuff. So pretty much, but I like the tone. I do think I played a little bit of Fable 1 because there was a thing about getting like the chicken title and like no one would fucking shut up about it. They kept Oh, everyone kept chilling. calling you a chicken. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember how that, that. <laughs> gets triggered or if it's a... But yeah, I don't know. Fable looks interesting. Moving on. What was up? another interesting one was South of Midnight. Which... Oh, that was the Louisiana Bayou? Yeah. That could be interesting. I like the overall vibe. I think I only have one complaint, and it's like they're doing this weird, like, fake low frame rate on the cutscenes. Oh, right. It was that one. That, it, it's funny. That's not the only game that did that, because there was another one that did it, too, which mm. I don't remember the name of. Something about cassettes or something. It was the nostalgia one. I, oh, the mixtape? Yeah. They also did it, and I'm like, I don't, I don't like this fake low frame rate thing it's kind of making me a little motion sick if that it sounds stupid but like it just feels gross to watch 
That's fair. I think with the artificial low frame rate does not work if you're making vaguely realistic graphics. Yeah, if if they made the characters look like they were claymation, which That's I mean, yeah. they do have a, 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 a unique look to them, but they still feel real enough that like that low frame rate is really just throwing me off and I don't like it. Mm. Other than that, it looks cool. The gameplay is actually at a smooth frame rate. Thanks thank freaking goodness because that would be a nightmare so it's just yeah it's just a weird design choice i'm not really maybe they'll be mod maybe they will give us the option or someone will mod it or they'll hear feedback and just change it because a lot of people don't like that kind of stuff it's i understand as somebody who does you know drawing i draw a lot of cartoons i don't do a lot of animating but like i know that there is like there is a certain frame rate of classic animation and some people or some devs when they make their 3d games 3D can just be animated fluidly, mm. but they'll they'll fake the old timey frame rate of old animation, and that can work for some things. But for for some of these games, it just it it doesn't work for me. The old speed is what like twenty one frames per second. I think it's twenty four, but or, it can be lower yeah. too. It it just depends on the style, especially if you're doing like stop motion. It can be really low. Mm. I I mentioned this too in the Monster Hunter trailer in a, a few podcasts ago, where um. At one point in the Monster Hunter trailer, the big frog monster was getting attacked by these little raptors, Mm. and the frame rate was, it was low. It wasn't super low, but it was just low enough that to me, it looked like a stop motion movie from like the old days. You said that was probably a mistake? I don't think it was a mistake. It's just like, that's the, whatever console they were running it on just couldn't handle it. Well, that's what I meant in the sense that like, it's supposed to be 30 or 60 FPS, but it was... Lower. getting clogged yeah. down for yeah. some reason so that was that one was, it was a, unintentional that was a funny one at <laughs> least that one again it was unintentional so like when you're playing it if you're playing it on good hardware or whatever it won't look like that but these other ones are just this is a design choice during our cutscenes. we wanted to look low frame rate and i really didn't like that but yeah cool looking game don't like the frame rate other than that it's cool um i think the last thing i had for microsoft and probably the most impactful for me was fallout 76 now, I haven't been playing Fallout 76 anymore because I've been just head deep into Genshin Impact. But yeah, they got the new expansion with the new map and the announced playable ghouls, which is, that is interesting. interesting. Yes. That is, I think the only game that has done playable ghoul before was like the an Xbox game. Uh, I think it was called Brotherhood of Fallout Brotherhood of Steel. And it's like, it was basically like Diablo, top down, and you could play a ghoul there. And for those that don't know or haven't even seen the Fallout show, which you should see the Fallout show, even if you don't like Fallout or have never played Fallout. Or... It's a good show. It was really well done. I've heard even people who are not gamers who really love that show. And yeah, it was incredibly well done. But to give a basically a TLDR about ghouls and Fallout, they're irradiated people. They kind of look like zombies. Basically, radiation turned them into this, like their skin is melting and stuff. It's basically kind of inspired by the, uh, should I even talk about that? It's kind of dark they're just melting due to radiation yeah it's when i think about it in real life i was like oh this is gruesome and i'm just here being like excited about it in games but hey that's video games for you right like a lot of things in video games are gruesome in real life Mm. anyway let's not get too negative and think about the sadness in fallout basically the ghouls they've been irradiated and turned into this they kind of look like zombies but because of that they become like immune to the negative effects of radiation in the sense of like i guess they've already had the worst of it besides death so Mm. now a ghoul can like wander around in radiation zones and it's no problem whereas a human character they have to worry about it and you'll hear the geiger counter it's like oh it's too irradiated over here Mm. ghouls don't have to worry about that so it's going to be interesting to see how they balance those changes to like the pros and cons of being ghouls like lore wise there's a lot of towns like in fallout 4 diamond city there's no ghouls allowed in there yeah so like how would you play that could a ghoul go in there if you're a playable character it's kind of like in skyrim because khajiit were technically like excluded from a lot of the like a lot of the towns are like if you're a khajiit you're not allowed in here set up your little shops outside you dirty monger cats yeah like you're technically not supposed to be allowed in white yeah But, like, they didn't really, I guess for gameplay reasons, they're like, well, we can't exclude players from going in there. But, like, it kind of detracts from it if you don't let the game force you to roleplay other alternatives. Mm. It's kind of like, um, this is another tangent, but, like, in Breath of the Wild, there's that one town where, like, only women are allowed inside, right? Yeah, so, so Link has to cross-dress. Yeah, exactly. But if you play, like, as Linkle, which is a whole other discussion, 
if you play as Linkle, she's already a girl. So she can just go in. You don't mm-hmm. have to do that quest. And it's a really cool little twist on the gameplay. I like that kind of stuff. Mm. So anyway, Fallout, Google's interesting. One last thought on that. Sure. Does it count if you can add ghouls and glowing ones in RimWorld as playing as a ghoul? Well, that's a whole other <laughs> game, but RimWorld is interesting that you can just add anything. Yeah. Any game that you can mod, yeah, you can just add anything. I saw somebody post a video about Genshin Impact where they had modded CJ from Grand Theft Auto into it. Oh my it. god. Because, like, if it's not Thomas the Tank Engine, it's CJ who gets put into everything, right? Mm, like, so, oh, here we go again. Yeah, so that's... That's funny. I love, I love, love, love mods. Like, just being able to do silly things or even just change minor things, whatever. Anyway, that's it for Microsoft. We've already spent more time on talking about that than I intended, so let's move on to Nintendo. Nintendo show was recently, and there's only a few things that I really cared about, but if there's anything else you saw that you want to talk about, by all means. That's assuming I remember it. So the f- the biggest thing, in my opinion, was there's a new Zelda oh yeah and it's it's top down i think it's basically the same style as the remake that they did for uh, Link's awakening so it kind of looks like a toy like the kind of like ds types of games i guess like it looks more plastic and toy like but it's that top down type of view it's like the classic classic uh perspective of zelda games Mm. the twist being that they're you're finally playing as zelda well besides the cda cdi games those don't count you know, I almost feel bad for them because they were ahead of their time and like, Zelda should be able to be played. She should get her own adventure. They just didn't have the technical skill to make it good. Yeah, it was just the style. I guess the style was one thing because yeah, it was like MS issue. paint drawings that were animated. For the cutscenes, yeah. Yeah. And then on top of that, it was a really weird controller, like more of a remote control. Yeah, that it had so many issues. So Nintendo finally, I, I don't know, f- f- how many decades later they finally just you know what we'll do it we'll make a good zelda game mm. so it looks like it's classic top-down zelda except you control zelda and it's like mixed with uh, magic minecraft magic and monster collecting mm. so like oh you can make a bed you can make seven beds and make a bridge out of a bunch of beds <laughs> You can plop water and swim up cliffs with water. You can make a bunch of moblins fight for you. It looks fun. Uh, yeah, I'm really interested. Like, I don't think there's... Yes, you can copy beds and you can build a bed bridge if you want. <laughs> but I guess it's probably not going to have any, like, actual village building. Which would be interesting if they did it almost in a style of Dragon Quest builders. Because you uh-uh. go on a quest, but you also help build up a village, I believe. I never played that. I've wa- I've I've been meaning to because I love Dragon Quest, but I just never got around to that yet. I think if you do, I've heard just start with two because there's a lot of quality of life improvements with it. Yeah, that's what I've heard too. But if you could build up a village, because I mean, this is the world of high rule. There's gonna be people that need help building things. Even in Ocarina of Time, they were building a town. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if they did make a, you know, some quest where it's like, oh, this person's house got destroyed. Can you build them a new one? I hope so. So we'll see. Um, We don't have too much info besides what was in the trailer. And the Mm. trailer focused mostly on, like, look at the cool stuff you can do. Yeah. But it's interesting. I'm glad they're finally giving Zelda some light. I I had hoped that in Tears of the Kingdom, Zelda would be playable because you save her in the first game. And, oh, no, in the second game, she has to get, you know, relegated to... Anyway, that's a whole other issue. I haven't even played that fully yet, so... Quick question, though, before we move on. Do you think Nintendo finally giving Zelda a first chance or a second chance, if you count the CDIs, do you think that is partially because they've given Princess Peach a couple of times and people played enough of those games that they're like, oh, maybe people actually do want to play as women? I don't know. I don't know how well the the, the Peach game sold. From what I've heard, the, the, the latest Peach game was kind of like too easy yeah like this is meant for little girls so we're gonna make it brain dead easy i guess so i mean that's fine if you know for kids to play because i guess kids get frustrated easily these days Mm. i mean god back in my day yeah really when i played the nintendo on the nes like games were hard and yeah it took me like weeks to beat Mega Man 2 or whatever but like now if i play Mega Man 2 it can beat it in two hours or whatever <laughs> so yeah it's different kids nowadays are just they have phones and like a million other things distracting them so it wasn't like when we were kids like you got this one game if you want to play a video game you're gonna play this one game for a month yeah so i guess it's just different so like yeah 
I but I know. hope that is part of the influence. Just get more women, the more of the Nintendo girls into. I mean, they have. It'll be coming up. They have um, Samus. Yeah. But she's usually in her armor for the vast majority of the time. So. That's fine. I mean, she's cool, but I, we will. You know what? Let's just talk about that now, because when they this was the final announcement of the show, but we'll double back to the, some of the other stuff. They, they showed finally Metroid Prime Four, which a lot of people are excited for, but for me, it's just like, eh, yeah, okay, whatever. I I played the first game, and I just I think I just like the two D ones better, so that's fine. That's fair, but you didn't you haven't been able to play the last two D one that they made. No, I haven't bought it yet because, well, it's a Nintendo game, so it's like still Never 60, on sale. Yeah, 70 yeah. bucks. And I'm like, well, this game's like maybe 10 hours, and $60 is not insignificant to me right now. So I don't know. Maybe one day when. Maybe <laughs> maybe one day. Um, so yeah, Metroid Prime 4. I was. This is a part four of the Metroid Prime series. Metroid itself has a ton of other games that way more than four, so. Now, this was also, Metroid 4 was the one that was in development hell for a long Metroid time? Metroid Prime 4, specifically, yes. Sorry. Sorry, I, I don't want to be pedantic, but Metroid 4 is technically already out, so yes. Okay. <laughs> so, Metroid Regular is the 2D, Metroid Prime is the 3D. Yeah. The shooter up. Yeah. Shooter up. Yeah. This was in development hell for a while, I, I, I guess. But, yeah, whatever. It's coming out now. People are excited. Good for them. I'm happy for you guys to enjoy well, they got their game before Silk Song people. You know what I wanted as as far as number fours go for Nintendo. I was hearing rumors that Fire Emblem Four was getting a remake. Oh. And I really wanted that, but it wasn't in the show, so I won't talk about it too much. Other stuff that we can talk about: Mario and Luigi are getting a new RPG, mm. and it looks cute. I guess. I think yeah. I know you were. You didn't seem too happy about, I guess, the stylized choice. I think I'm just a little underwhelmed by Nintendo Switch graphics at this point because mm. I play a lot of games on my PC and I don't have a super powerful PC. I only have a RTX 2060, which, you know, for people who know what that means, they'll, they'll know it's not like the most high-end thing ever. I mean, when did we build the computers with those graphic cards? Almost the a decade ago? Basically, N NVIDIA is up to the 40 series. This is a 20 series card. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was many years ago. And it was the 2060, which is the lowest of the 20 series. So yeah, it's not like the most high-end thing. But like, it's hard for me to see Nintendo games on the Switch. And like, you can tell like the, it's being held back by the hardware. I think this game does not look amazing. So when I see it, I'm just like, oh, God, you guys have so much potential to make beautiful, cartoony games. But you're being held back by this technology that's basically like outdated by modern mobile phones. <laughs> Possibly. But I think the other thing about this is it feels to me like, one, they were trying to stay within the limits of the Switch. But they're also trying to keep with the style of the DS games that they started on. Well, see, that's the thing I mean. Like, you can make beautiful cartoony games with higher fidelity graphics. Mm. And I don't want to be, you know, getting into, oh, graphics are everything, because obviously not. But, like, when it's of this style and I can see, like, oof, there's a, something is holding back the potential here, it's a little sad. Because, like, okay, again, to go back, I am playing Genshin Impact right now. I am playing it on my PC. It is a cartoony game that people used to call a Breath of the Wild clone. But it is absolutely beautiful, especially the newer areas. Because just like WoW, when you like you see the very first world they made, and then you see like, oh, this is the world we made in like three years later. You they can see are, the improvements. Yeah, and the game is just beautiful. There's this one area I was going through that was like a, a little valley, a little Chinese valley with a little village, and they make a bunch of tea. And you got the tea side and the hills with a tea on it, and it was just so beautiful. And this is like... The type of this is the game that people thought, oh, this is a Breath of the Wild clone because it looks like Breath of the Wild. Hmm. But like because it's not being held back by Switch hardware, it looks beautiful. And even for like Breath of the Wild when we played it on PC, just the fact of being able to play it at 1080p without any like low frame rate and everything looks sharp and the draw distance cranked up, it just looks so beautiful. Yeah, I do remember when we when I played it on my computer and then I would go to the discussions about it and people were complaining about I guess that one area where you have to follow the flame or something or was it at the tree with the sword? Something about yeah, the frame mm. rate was dropping. Oh. And mm. I'm like, "Oh, I didn't experience that at all." Yeah. Sorry. Oh, it's so sad. Nintendo makes their games do look 
pretty for what I know they can make good looking games, but like the hardware is holding them back. And that's probably why Switch 2 is coming out soon, so well, whatever. But Which like, is unfortunate because wasn't the GameCube really high end for its time? It was basically on par with the Xbox, yeah. But then they stopped trying to keep up, and hey, it's worked for them, so whatever. I suppose. I just, I dream and wish of a world where everything just was on every console. Like Maybe oh, one day. I can play this Nintendo game on my PC without having to emulate it. Mm. And I can... Yeah, we would still give Nintendo money for it if they just put it there. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, whatever. That's, speaking of which, like, that was the interesting thing about the, about the beginning of the... Was it in the beginning? At some point in the Nintendo show, there was a Horizon Zero Dawn game. The Lego one. Yeah. And okay, it's the Lego one. So maybe Lego takes precedent over Sony's property. Because Lego's going to put their things on everything. But just the fact that Horizon Zero Dawn is a Sony property. And that's coming to a Nintendo console. And they also put it on PC. It's like Sony themselves, they are experimenting with like, maybe we can just put things on everything. Mm. And I love that because I do want to play their games. I just don't want to buy a PS5. I yeah, bought that a, shit's expensive. I bought a PS4. I just want to play things on my PC. And I think for me, it's not so much the graphics thing because, again, my graphics card isn't amazing. It's just a longevity thing. Mm. We have a PS3 and a PS4 and a Wii and a Switch. And, like, all the games on there are just, like, they're segmented. Do I want to play a game from this thing? I have to connect this. Is the service on this even working? I don't know. It's just a big pain in the butt. Whereas if it's on PC, I'm just going to have access to it forever. Mm. So that, that to me, is the biggest selling point to, of PC gaming. And I think for me, one of there's a couple of things for PC gaming for me. One is obviously modding, but I won't get too much into that right now. But a thing, big thing for me compared to console is certain games I feel personally feel work better with maybe a keyboard and mouse control yeah that's fair. but the thing with pc is if a game works better with controller i have that option most of the time uh, assuming the dev allows that option they're getting better about that these days yeah but i'm saying like the computer will accept plugging a controller in yeah. to use it and i just think that's great like i can yeah i remember one time when we were playing the breath of the wild that we do own playing that on the pc and you know the modding was fun but it was funny to say that i'm on my pc playing a nintendo switch game with the ps3 controller yeah like that's great and we modded the the ui so that the you know the, the button prompts were the ps4 controller buttons so yeah mm. this, this is fun i love that too it's just it, customizing and like playing games the way you want to is just the best mm, agreed Anyway, um... Although, one thing about the Horizon Dawn trailer for the Lego things, I wonder if those captions were on the Sony, like the PlayStation, or if that was on the Switch. Because, like, it would be interesting to see the Switch play with those graphics, because that looked gorgeous. It did look surprisingly good, especially after seeing Mario and Luigi. Again, which is why I think it was partially stylized. I... I don't know. Like, everyone has their own engines on these things, obviously. Because, like, I remember when Monster Hunter Rise first came out to Switch. That game looked really good on the Switch. And they talk about Xeno... Was it Xeno Gears that it had really good graphics? And, um, like... Xeno Blade, I think? Xeno something. Yeah, because there's Xeno Gears, which is the one on the PS1. And then there's Xeno Saga, which was on PS2. And then, X I think, yeah, Xeno Blade. So there's Xeno Blade 2 and 3 that were natively made for the switch and yeah those games look really good but so did like breath of the wild mm. but then you have like you know pokemon which did not look good oh boy yeah. so it's like it, it just depends on what on who's making the game what engine they're running because you see the open world of xenoblade 2 or xenoblade 3 and it's gorgeous if you yeah. see the gameplay of monster hunter rise it looks really good then you look at like pokemon and it's like whoa what happened and same for like mario and luigi i guess again they're they, they got their own style but like there was something about the world in that to me that looked not great although oddly enough if they wanted to keep more of the look of mario and Luigi from the ds days or i guess it was also game boy advance yeah maybe they should have kept it like the 2d sprite type of thing i was thinking that too but i can see how like especially for animations and stuff that 3d is just easier for them and that's just the, the, just as, what they're gonna do they got paper mario to make 2d and even then they're like we're gonna throw in a bunch of 3d here <laughs> <laughs> But you know what? It's fine. I'm not too worried about that. Um, I'm not surprised that they would do it in 3D these days. And that's fine. It, it looks, as far as the characters go, I think they look fine. I think to me, the most jarring thing was just the backgrounds it looked kind of weird. But 
you know what whatever it's it's a minor thing mm. i'm sure it'll be fun I, I like mario and luigi one i don't think i've played the other ones i played a little bit of inside story the one where you go inside bowser but mm. i never really finished it so oh a funny one <laughs> hello kitty island adventure is that what it's called i believe so and Which... my god i actually do want to play this I just find it so funny that Hello Kitty Island Adventure was a joke on that South Park episode about World of Warcraft, Mm. where Butters, everyone's playing World of Warcraft except Butters, who's like, I'm playing Hello Kitty Island Adventure. And now, how many years later, Hello Kitty Island Adventure is a real thing people can play. And it actually looks really fun, really cute, even for me. (laughs) Yeah. My only disappointment with this announcement was the fact that it's not coming out until next year. And I'm like... Well, shit. But I am happy that it's coming out from, I guess it was only on the Apple Arcade or whatever. Yeah. So I'm happy it'll be coming to Switch. I forget if it's free or not. It might be free. I don't know, actually. We should look into if it's free or if it's free. It'll either be free to play or, at or least cheapish. You know, purchase it. Honestly, but I do want to play it. It probably would be better if it wasn't free to play because then you won't have to deal with weird monetization stuff. That's fair. But then again, playing free can also... It it just depends. Like, I'm playing a free-to-play game right now, and I'm still loving it despite Mm. its issues, so... And we will also, or I guess I can, look up to see if they named it that specifically for the joke or not. Yeah, that would be... Or if it's just some really weird coincidence. Coincidence. Oh, God. It's just too perfect not to be a coincidence. (laughs) I I, will have to look into seeing if if it's coming to pc or other platforms because if it does come to pc that's probably where we'll end up playing it agreed but yeah it looks cute agretzko is in there which is fun yeah i I think if i'm remembering the time that one of the one of my friends on the otter kingdom i think it was jay they were playing it for a little bit and like sharing their screen on discord and i believe I think someone else in the group was joking like, oh, Akretsuko, like maybe you're going to, you know, help her with her singing or something. And I think the first quest when you meet her is to find her lost luggage, which has her microphone in it. Mm. (laughs) So that was cute. I just, it's cute that she's in it, but I kind of hope that she's not the only one that from that is that's in it. Like maybe throw in Fenico or or the other characters, you know, like I love those characters. That show is so good. Oh, Fenico is adorable. So like, I mean, I guess you don't, you wouldn't want them to like steal the show from Hello Kitty or whatever, Mm. but like the more of them that they put into that game, the more interesting I'll personally be because I don't really care too much about Hello Kitty. I mean, whatever. I'm sure she's cute and has like her own fun adventures, but I just like the silliness of the, the show. Like that's a go, so. Agreed. And there's a lot of... Hello Kitty has, one, been around for, like, a really long time, I think. And Hello Kitty has also done a lot of crossovers with others. So I don't know if they would do this specifically for the Switch, but they did have the Animal Crossing crossover. So it would be funny to have a couple of characters from Animal Crossing show up in that. Yeah. Oh, it's so weird to say that I'm actually interested in a Hello Kitty game, but here we are. Hey, you know what? If it's fun, it's fun just enjoy things for being cute and fun and yeah. happy <laughs> well that was the nintendo show is there anything else that comes to mind to you for you i you feel wanna... like there was something else in the nintendo show but i'm not remembering off the top of my head there was other stuff that i didn't mark down but like actually another speaking of hello kitty island adventure that was locked to ios right i believe so there's another game, and I don't remember if this was in the Xbox presentation or the Nintendo one. I think it was a Nintendo. Another iOS locked game called, I forget, it was called Fantasia or something. It's from the creator of Final Fantasy, and it's got Nobu Omatsu making the music again. So it's just like a reunion of these two powerhouses, and they're making a, they made an RPG, and it was locked to iOS, and now it's coming to Switch and maybe other platforms. But the interesting thing about it, and they didn't really showcase it too much in the trailer, is that they built like the overworld. Like when you're controlling your little character and walking through the maps, Mm. those worlds were actually like built physically. And like, I think they took pictures of those models or whatever and put them in the game. Oh, wow. So it's like, imagine like a train set, Mm. a model train set with all the fake trees and buildings built out on a table. They did that for this game. Mm. So that's kind of cool. Oh, I do remember one thing, which I'm kind of surprised you didn't bring up, but that's fine. I guess I'll bring it up. The Dragon Quest trilogy. Yeah, I, I thought about mentioning that, but then I was like... I, I would feel bad being like, yeah, this is great. I'm not going to play it. <laughs> oh. What if I played it? If you Because it's like the one, two, and three, although he 
I guess the main guy doing the presentation gave away what order you should play it in. Yeah, it's kind of a spoiler, but they basically spoiled it in the trailer. Basically, yeah, originally, okay, there's Dragon Quest Mm 1, where you play as, like, your solo guy, and you don't get a party in that game. Oh, dang. That's the one I played as a kid, because, and oh my god, the overworld music for Dragon Quest 1 is one of my favorite pieces of game music ever. It's so chill. Maybe, maybe I should make it this video. We can do that. I love that song, so look forward to that. Then Dragon Quest 2 was like, oh, you play as a party of three, and it's a direct continuation from Dragon Quest 1. Then Dragon Quest 3, it's like, oh, make a character and then go hire your own party member. So you go to the inn and you're like, oh, I want I want a fighter and I want a mage and I want a priest or maybe I want a joker or maybe I want a monk, whatever. You just, you go to the place, you hire a character, you pick their gender, you pick their name, and that's fun. You, there's a lot of party building mechanics in that and I must sucker for that. So I played 3. At the end of 3, you basically find out, oh, this is part of the original story. And it's a continuation. And it was a huge surprise. And it was like mind blowing back in the day. Mm. But then, but they put out the trailers and then just like, oh, this is a continuation. It's all in a trilogy. So they kind of spoil that for you. <laughs> so like, technically, if you want to play it in order, you could play three first and then one and two, which is interesting because we did that too. Remember when I made you watch Star Wars and we started with the, um... we started with the prequel trilogy and then we went to the original trilogy because I'm like, I vaguely remember the stories, so let's just assume yes. Yeah, it's funny because like I did that too. Like, oh, it'll be interesting to see your opinion of the story in quote unquote chronological order rather Mm -hmm. than theatrical release. And basically that's what the Dragon Quest people are doing. Like you can view it in chronological order instead of, you know, release order. Mm. So yeah, and I that's am, interesting. I am interested. We'll see how much it costs and, and mm, how more yeah. <laughs> into games I get into. But I would be interested to play it, give the opinion of someone who plays it again in the chronological order and not release order. But also I'm interested in like the hard thing with playing such older games is the quality of life things. Yeah. So I'm hoping they, it doesn't even have to be the graphics, although they probably, I think they did that too. Well, obviously, yeah. Yeah. But it's more of the gaming aspects, yeah. the playability. Grinding and saving. Yeah. So I would look forward to having a more updated version of that. Yeah. Because like if you play like, for example, Dragon Quest Eleven was the latest one. That one is balanced beautifully. You don't ever have to worry about grinding. It's such a comfortable experience to play. Mm. And it was actually really good, too. I love that game. I won't go into it here now, maybe some other day, but Dragon Quest Eleven was great. Dragon Quest One is not balanced like that. Back mm. in those days, especially on the NES, it's like, well, you've made it to a new area with tough enemies and you're too weak, so you got to go back to the old area and grind. My so, closest approximation, I'm assuming, would be playing the old style Pokemon games. And yes, yeah, I remember grinding yeah, exactly. a lot. Pokemon Red and Blue especially were really bad about that because it's like, well, you're in this new area and everyone is too strong, so go kill a bunch of wild Pokemon for a while until you're stronger. Mm. Pokemon 2 also got better at balancing that, so it's like they became less grindy over time, but the first one was wow. Yeah, so we'll see if they have improved that. When I played Dragon Quest 3, I technically played the Game Boy version, and I don't remember grinding being a thing that I had to do at any point, but hopefully, yeah, they, I, I know they've thrown in some new difficulty balancing stuff. I forget what they call it. They don't even call it difficulty modes, but there's like options you select in the in the beginning to make the game harder if you want to. Hmm. So I think they probably have balanced it, and yeah. The only thing I'm kind of concerned graphics-wise is it looked like it had a filter on it, which is because I don't recognize the characters. I was like, oh, is this one of the Bravely Defaults or one of the... Octopath Traveler. Octopath Traveler. (laughs) So I kind of hope the filters in the actual game aren't as bad or I can turn them off because I don't like the filtering. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. I don't know. I'd have to see it and get used to playing it, but there's a definitely a trend of like these old 2D remasters. They just going absolutely crazy with filters and stuff. Like it's Octopath like, Traveler. Please don't do this. This is not Instagram. Octopath Traveler and um, there was a Triangle Strategy. I think it was called. Both of those games, like they're 2D and they look okay, but oh my god, they throw so much filters. It's like everything is covered in a haze of weird hues and colors. And just like, "Mm, I don't know. I'm not sure about this approach. No, sir. Don't like it. Whereas if you look at the the Suikoden remasters that they're making, I think they did a perfect job where it's like they've updated the backgrounds, but they still look like the old style 2D. Mm. And 
it just those games are gorgeous and i cannot wait for the sequel and remasters to come out so we can play them together Yay. so yeah that's the nintendo show which wow i wanted to keep this under 30 minutes but we went to 50 at least by our timestamp. who knows what it is after editing so what do you want to talk about over your game because it's been all genshin isn't it um i guess i've only been playing genshin yeah i, I wasn't gonna go too deep into it but i've finally started sumeru which is i thought it was like a korea but it's more like in india, india. yeah mm-hmm. and like you look at the architecture of the the housing and, and the buildings and the names of the cities yeah this is not korea it's yeah you showed india. me the map and i saw some of the town names and i'm like yeah that that's definitely indian vibes and some of the titles of the people's names i can't even remember they're very long like there's lesser lord i'm sorry i don't know what the heck his name is it's a very long indian sounding name and it's like oh okay this is more that setting and and like i think they must have like some some uh, allusions to like buddhism and maybe Mm. hindu stuff because like one of the first quests that i've ran into the town is like oh you there's this lady she's like she's meditating in this cave and she had to go like on this meditation retreat for like three days and and basically she was trying to commune with without getting too into the story of it like basically the nature she's Mm -hmm. meditating to try to connect to nature and learn from it etc it's deeper than that but that's the tldr so yeah the new area is basically like a rainforesty very green area so i guess kind of like an indian rainforest but it's also like if you keep going west eventually you'll run into like a desert, desert. area yeah that's which, definitely india has both yeah so it's like oh okay obviously it's kind of india so mm-hmm. yeah it's been really cool i've the story i mean i'm just barely into the story but even already it's like one of the characters is like you're gonna throw a, a heart-wrenching sad character moment and i've just met you come on and i do like it hit me because i like this character's all oh, come please, on please no trauma dumping yeah at first yeah, meeting. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> So it's like the characters are good, and it's weird because like you you you're mostly a silent protagonist, and they don't really handle that great. But like you have your little companion, and she's basically your mouthpiece, mm. and the interactions are fun. And I, yeah, I've been enjoying the game. But Is your little sidekick like Metatron? Technically, you talk in the sense of like there's dialogue boxes, well dialogue options every so often, but some of the dialogue boxes are really bad. <laughs> I I won't go into why here, but yeah, yeah. it's fine. The game is enjoyable i like it and i've been having fun like just playing it and modding it and like seeing what kind of stuff i get out of the gotcha even because like i still you still get free stuff right so Mm. like i recently pulled a really good weapon it's like oh my god this is perfect for my main character gene it's like oh it's exciting when that happens and again i'm not paying any money so i'm playing this strictly free to play never giving them a cent which is weird when i'm like saying i love this game and yet I'm not supporting it. but It's, it's just fine. Like, They're making billions. It's just the monetization practice I can't agree with. Everything else I love. But yeah, I'm having fun with it. And the music in this area is fantastic too. I've already committed to the Dragon Quest music, but maybe next time I'll have to play some of the... Well, we've done Genshin music before. Yeah, but like there's this part where I get to this town and I'm talking to these kids because like, oh, these kids are seeing little monsters in the in the forest and we have to figure out what's going on. Ooh, but she, the she. <laughs> maybe but the music in that town was just so fuck so so damn good <laughs> and you know what i really like about this too like you know when you play like breath of the wild there's like the little piano every so often like you're, mm-hmm. <clears throat> when you're on your horse or whatever yep. and then like the battle has its own music whatever but it's it can be kind of like quiet and sleepy sometimes mm. Genshin does this thing where every zone has like its own music and different parts of the zones can have different parts of different music too. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of music in this game. But one of the things I like, at least for this zone that I noticed, or some of the zones, like when there's the exploration theme, but when you get into a fight, there's like, it's kind of like the same theme except remixed into like an action fighty mood. Mm. So like it never like feels distracting because sometimes when i'm playing breath of the wild and like oh it's the battle music again but in this it's like it's just the music i've been hearing except now it's like the battle version of it and i really like when games do that fire emblem does that too fire emblem awakening i think was the first one that did that it's like there's the overworld music the the main map music but then when you pull into the fight like when you tell your character to attack it like kicks into like the fight music and it's the same thing except like more exciting and more action-packed so it merges in and out yeah like gracefully 
Exactly. It's so good. So yeah, I've been enjoying it. What about you? I think. So I finally finished Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. And what is there to say? It was really good. The graphics, again, are just great. And I just want to make some of those characters. There's just something about it. Yeah. The, the story was fine. It was, you know, had its silly points. And it's not like super, I don't know, it, it's not super complicated or anything, I guess. It's just a fun romp. Yeah, Bowser's not the completely total bad guy this time. <laughs> um, the only thing I really have to say is, wow, that last battle is, like, really hard compared to everything else I've yeah, done. Yeah, well, the final test. Yeah, and I, because it's, there's two things that make it complicated or harder. Is One, it's just a hard battle in general. Yeah. But also because you've done two previous battles. Like, it's one battle, and then the second battle right after, mm -hmm. and then the third battle. So I had basically gone through all of my items by the time I finally reached the final boss. Mm -hmm. And I tried multiple times to fight the final boss as I was. Mm -hmm. But I finally, like, look, I can't do this. It's taking too long. So I just had to save outside the door just to make sure. And then I had to go out. I had to reset my badges because I finally knew what exactly I was up against. So I don't need this badge. I do. This badge could definitely be a help. And mm. Because I mostly built up my Mario. I didn't actually put much into Mario's health. Like <laughs> I think I clicked it a couple of times. But the vast majority of my points I put into badges and then also put into the flower power because I was using so many attacks. You were so, too squishy. I mean, maybe. But because I had all those badges and all that flower power, I did make it work. I just had to switch my badges around. Yeah. And then after finishing the badges and checking the shops just to make sure I had all the good ones that I thought I needed, then I just completely filled up on items. And on top of that, there were, like, my two main side characters that I played with were either Coops or Bababari or Captain Bomb. I'll just call him that, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they were good, and I used them so much, they were my two most used characters. But when I got to the final boss, I used Flurry. <laughs> I used Flurry. And she was just an amazing help because she had one of her powers, the enemies will miss Mario more. Yeah. And then I also had badges on top of that to make them miss Mario more. And it just built up and up and up. And I was surprised. I didn't use her much except when I needed her to like blow a piece of paper out of the way. <laughs> but she helped me defeat the final boss. So Aww. props to Flurry for that. That's the fun thing about like when you get to a point where it's like, oh, I got to think about this and strategize and tweak things. I, I love games like that, which is why I like, you know, tactic games. <laughs> mm. It was just kind of odd in a sense because I didn't have to do that for the most part of the game. Like there were yeah, certain things and certain fair. badges, but then I get to this and I don't need that at all. And oh, I finally did it after probably five or six attempts, but <laughs> yeah, well, you got to finally enjoy the full game. Yeah, but four or five of those attempts were before I changed badges. And then once I did that and got all new items and got a lot of items that attacked multiple parts, multiple parts at the same time and for enough I needed. And it was just, it was hard, but it was good. Yeah, satisfying. Yes. Kind of like a Dark Souls boss. <laughs> uh, sure. I mean. <laughs> that satisfaction of overcoming something is the same with Monster Hunter. It's like, oh, this took forever, but man, it feels good when we're finally done. Yeah. It's so it was funny. fun. It was nice. It was really good because I, you know, I got it free. So that was pretty sweet. It's such a good game, too. It's so just fun. Like, they weren't afraid to be crazy with their characters and story. And, like, yeah, I love that game. So I might have to play some of the other older Paper Marios at some point. And then there's, of course, Origami King, which is newish. It's not technically the newest one anymore unless you don't count remakes, but... Yeah, I, I remember I, I played this one first, and then I went back and tried Paper Mario on the Nintendo 64. Mm. And like I said, I think I got to the Ninja, Ninja Turtles and a little bit past that, but I never finished it. I think Paper Mart, a thousand-year door, just there's just something about it. They just knocked it out of the park with that one. 
Right. So yeah, that was good, and that's basically all I've played this week because uh, last week was surprisingly busy for me. So yeah, it was a pretty hectic week. So now I can concentrate for a little bit on other things. Yeah, or just play whatever and keep playing what we're playing or what I'm playing. I don't know. Maybe I'll go back to Rimworld a little bit because of that video you showed me. There was also like, like the Steam demo fest, and it's like I was, oh, yeah. I was gonna play all these demos, and then I just never did. <laughs> well, I did download a lot. We'll see how many are left to still play. Because like I said earlier, some companies or publishers will let you yeah, yeah. have the demo after the demo fest and others will just make you purchase it. So we'll and see which ones when she says left. she said earlier, she means before we were recording. It's fine. I'm sure they can guess that. I just don't want people to hear that. I'm like, well, did I miss something? Surprise, we talk out about games outside of the podcasting. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well, that's a pretty big one. It's getting hot here because it's summer and summer sucks. Yeah, it's going to be in the 90s. So we're going to go before we have to turn on the AC unit. Yep. Well, it's been fun. Maybe next time we can actually talk about more games and other unrelated stuff besides just shows and shows and shows. Because there's a bunch of stuff I just want to talk about, like theories and just, you know. Actual themes. Yeah, just talking about other stuff than just like a bunch of commercials. Even though we do get excited about commercials. So whatever. It's fun. Well, we'll see you next week. And have a good night or day. Bye. (laughs) Bye.